when the battle chooses you, God fights for you. It's with you that he will show himself mighty. People may strip you of what you have, but so long as they have not stripped you of your life, there is still hope for you. to another Tuesday with the Ambassador of Hope. We are so happy and blessed that you could make it here this Tuesday with us. Before we go ahead and get started, I do ask that you go ahead and share this on as many platforms as you can. I believe we are currently live on YouTube and Facebook. Also, don't forget tomorrow starts our conference that we have once a year, ISI. Tomorrow will be the first day at 7 p.m. Come and see us and let's see what the Lord will do. Thank you again for joining us, and we'll be with you soon. You may have lost a lot of physical and as well as you are alive. You have lost everything. When the battle chooses you, God fights for you. It's with you that he will show himself mighty. People may strip you of what you have, but so long as they have not stripped you of your life, there is still hope for you. Again, welcome to Tuesdays with the Ambassador of Hope. Thank you, Nikki, for giving us such a wonderful intro. And I still want to remind you, tomorrow starts our flagship conference, Iron Sharpens Iron Leadership Conference. It's not just for pastors, it's for leaders. And there's a leader on the inside of you crying out for expression. Somebody has to bring that leader out of you. And if you're a leader already, you can get better. The only room that is the best room in your house is the room for improvement. So let's get together tomorrow. Register, go online. We put a flyer there for you. Please go online, advancedlife.org, and register. I have my good friends, Dr. Mensah Otabo, Dr. Samchand, Dr. Zenzo Matoga, and Dr. Francis Miles. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. People have registered by their hundreds, and it's going to be great. The greatest investment you can ever make in your you can ever make is to invest in yourself because you know something everywhere you go you carry your whole self there. There are some things you cannot delegate. There are some things you cannot relegate. And one of them is self improvement. You've got to do it yourself. It's very important invest and become the best version of yourself. Thank you again for coming on this program episode number 57. No matter what the week has done, no matter whatever has been thrown at you, remember this. So long as there's breath in your nostrils and there's a heartbeat in your chest, there's still hope for you. It is not over until God says it is over. We come your way every, every Tuesday and our agenda is just one. Together we learn to become better people in this life. I've told you this is not another church service. This is not in competition to any church or ministry organization. No, we only came to help what other people are trying to do in your life. That is how we complement one another. So wherever you serve, whatever church, organization, please make sure that 
you serve your pastors, you serve under your apostles, your prophets, your, past, your teachers, your evangelists, to make this world a better place. Our vision is to depopulate hell, like Reinhard Bonke will say, and repopulate heaven. Thank you again for coming up today. God bless you so much. Let's see who have we got here. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. I want to see as many of you as possible. Uh, today, we are starting a brand new series, like I put on our flyer, Live Well and Leave Well. We will understand as the weeks go by. Live Well and Leave Well. One of the greatest things that you've got to know is that you don't have to quit after you are defeated. If you're going to quit, quit, quit whilst you are ahead. Quit in style. Go in style. So, Abigail, Abigail Toku from Kerry's house in Accra, Ghana. God richly bless you. Collins for being my intercessor. Man of God, God bless you. Liz K, you've been missing in action. I hope everything is going well. You've been in our prayers and our thoughts. We hope to see you very soon. Ohine Boateng, all the way from Loganville, Georgia. Dr. Mary Ofe Ajima, and doctor, God bless you so much. I hope everything is going well. Big girl, big girl, God bless, God bless, God bless, God bless. The shepherd, one and only shepherd, Kusi Buati, Kusi Buadum, God richly bless you. Welcome. The Honorable Adum Eje Echampong, forever faithful. Thank you. Yes, it's a great day to be alive. I totally agree with you. Victoria Corte, all the way from Cincinnati, Ohio. You are featuring right here, Reverend David Jehu from Virginia. God richly bless you. Well, Raymond Apia says tomorrow is D-Day. Well, today is semi-D-Day. Tomorrow is the real D-Day, Raymond. Thank you. Listen, please share. Share to many people as possible. Just pick up your device and share. We're going to get rolling into the meat of the thing in the next 60 seconds. So please do that. Adam Mate, yes, ISI is finally here, but I'm here today before tomorrow. You know, today sometimes stops tomorrow from coming into, into operation. So let's do that. Let's go ahead. God bless you so much. Thank you, Victoria, for blessing me. And thank you, Minister Felicia McAdi. It's good to be here again. Yes, there's no place like here. Suzanne Odom, blessings. Joe Bando. Joe, God richly bless you. Yes, yes. Well, M Minister Felicia McAdi says, Grandpa, you are looking so good. I think I'm going to agree with you. Yes, I, I think I agree with you. I may not say it, but I agree with you. Thank you. Thank you. Remember, Shepherd is reminding you that any day, every day above the ground is a good day. You're not dead yet. There's still life for you. Mami Tebua. Mami says, please share. Millicent, Mami Amousu. Millicent, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Brakojo. Brakojo, thank you for coming up on this platform. We are so grateful for you. Mama Regina Pia, you are watching live. The one and only Apostle Metal Dolly. Happy birthday to you on the birthday mood. God bless you. I like it when you say that slow is the only way that you take to get to your destination. I understand. We walk slowly through life. It's a part of leadership. God bless you. Listen, in this thing called leadership, speed is not the, the, the name. It's consistency. God bless you so much. We're going, to be, we're going to be blessed today. Please share. I'm still waiting. I want us to hit a particular number, then we start rolling. Let me see our friends and family on YouTube. So many of you on YouTube. Oh, wow. God bless you so much. Friends and family on YouTube, I thank God for your life. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We welcome you all. We welcome you all. Let's see who you are. God richly bless you as you, as yes, go ahead and share. Go ahead and share. Go ahead and share. Mami Efua, all the way from London, England. God bless you. Who is here? Oh, man. So many of you, I see the numbers going up. God bless you. Thank God for your life. Thank God for, please share, please share, please share, please share. We're going to get, we're going to learn some very powerful things tonight. Millie, my Millie, my Millie. Millie sent Brando, God richly bless you so much. Rockefeller, thank you for loving me. Jamestown, one day we're going to meet in Jamestown. How about that? God richly bless you. The Reverend Sammy Pearson Opoku, a champion, my own Osofo Penin, the high priest. Welcome to the city of Atlanta. I know you are pumped out for ISI. Thank God for your life. I really, really love and appreciate you, and you know that. God bless you. Ransford, somebody. yes, Ransford, I've seen that you are here. You are glued to my teaching. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Nana Adade, Nana, how are you? And now the children, I hope you're all doing well on the other side of Atlanta. You are such an amazing woman. God richly bless you. Ethel Afrani, welcome to the city of Atlanta. At least for the next few days, you have escaped the brutality of Minnesota. Welcome to civilization. I love you. God bless you and your husband for coming here. Blessings upon everybody. We want to see, come on, come on, come on, come on. Share everybody. Share, 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 share. 
I will share him. Give her some hearts. Give her some thumbs up. Let's do this thing together. Let's do this thing together. I can't, I can't feel you at all today. I really want to feel. I really want to feel that you are in for a treat tonight. Blessings upon you. Nana Bonsa, Nana, good evening to you too. Episode number 57, starting a brand new series, Live Well and Live Well. Wow, this is going to be awesome. You know, the thought hit me because of some few things that have come my way recently. And over the years, as I've interacted with people, I've observed people, I've led people. Um, I've, I've, I, I have the humble opportunity of, you know, connecting with people from all strands of life and from different age, age brackets. And I realize that sometimes, 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 some things happen that, you know, make people feel defeated. I want to help you today. I want to come your way. So that not only, you see, sometimes people die and we say rest in peace. You can almost feel that they did rest in peace. They rested in pieces. If you're going to leave, I want you to live in style. And anything that you do today, you have the benefit tomorrow. Whoever you are is shaped by the things that you did yesterday. So that is why I'm coming your way. Nana, daddy, God bless you again. Sean Belana, Sean, God bless you. Listen, can you tag some friends? Can you tag about 10 friends wherever you are? And let's do that. I want the numbers to go up a little bit so that everybody will benefit from this. Listen, sometimes the, the sad thing is that the people that really, that really need things are the people who don't go for it. The things that bless us are the things. Reverend Jerry Wise, Reverend Jerry, how are you and your wife? I hope you are doing well and your ministry is doing very well. I totally love and appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Jacqueline, Jackie, and you know, Jackie, God bless you so much. We're going to learn together. We're going to become better. Now, last one, then we go, we're, going to, we're going to set the ball rolling. Can you tag some few, few people? Go ahead, let's do that. Find some few friends and tag them. Share, I'm going to share. Listen, I picked up my device. I'm going to share right now. I'm going to tag a whole lot of groups. So let's do that. Let's do the ambassador of hope you share sharing right now. Mami Nyamiche, you are ready to learn. God richly bless you. Miripa Natasha says, please share and invite friends and family. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming into our room. We don't take anybody for granted at all. We thank God for your life. Listen, sometimes we feed on so much junk that we become spiritually and wisdomically deficient. But this is wisdom for living. This will help you. Listen, one of the saddest things that I have observed in this life is that many times people leave things very late. I meet people, I talk to people, and sometimes I ask them, why didn't you do this earlier enough? Why didn't you do this? Sometimes people go to the dentist, and the dentist tell them, if you had brought this thing a little bit early, we could have saved you. People go to the hospital, things are found, and they say, listen, early detection saves a lot of lives. Doctors will tell you, early detection is a thing. If you are able to detect it early, your chances of survival become higher. And it's the same thing in life. Sometimes we leave a lot of things very late. And you know the result? It results in pain, the pain of regret. The pain of regret. Listen, if there's any desire that I have for you, it is this. I don't want you to end your life or anything with the pain of regret. The wise man in Ecclesiastes says something that I'm an observer. There's an evil that I've seen under the sun. It's like an arrow that is proceeding from the king. And he begins to talk about some things that he has seen that is not very good. And, and it, it bothered him. And for me, as I observe a whole lot of things, I, I get bothered. I have seen leaders. I have seen business people. I have seen talented and gifted people. People that should, should be on top of things. They come to the twilight of their lives. And then they get bitter. They get angry. Why? Because they look over the panorama, panorama of their lives and they see a lot of wasted opportunities. My burden today and in the next week or so is to come alongside you. I want to help you. I want to hold your hands. I want to work with you. I want to help position yourself so that you can build a proper legacy for today. Buildings are not put up overnight, regardless of how accomplished you may be. Buildings don't just spring up overnight. Things that don't just spring up overnight. In fact, in the Bible, the only tree that grew overnight died overnight. The tree that was grown over Jonah. But it takes time. So please listen to me. Wherever you are, I don't want you to look over your shoulder and say, man, I regret I didn't do this. I regret I should have done that. Please listen to me. Listen, the ambassador of hope is telling you something. I want, I want you to look at me and listen to this. 
It is never too late to make it right if you will begin today and right now. Don't give up. Don't resign yourself to fate. Nothing can be changed if it is not faced. Even though not everything faced can be changed, nothing can be changed if you don't face it. Can you determine today that, listen, no matter how terrible I've, I've missed up, it doesn't matter all the mistakes. It doesn't matter all the lost opportunities or the missed opportunities. I can do it again today. Listen, begin what you can begin again today. Oh, yes. Pick it up one more time. You didn't finish it. Go finish it. Correct the things that you can correct today. It is not over until God says it's over. Do what you can right now, today. Don't postpone tomorrow. Don't, don't postpone it to tomorrow. Don't wait till tomorrow to be wise. Tomorrow's sun may never start, rise on you. And if you have realized, one of the things that you know is that our lives as human beings here on earth follow patterns. There are some predictable patterns. Yes, there are predictable patterns. We call them seasons. We call them seasons. The wise man in the book of Ecclesiastes says something. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse number 1. He says that there's a time for everything. A season for every activity under the heavens. Remember that. There's a time for everything. There's a time for everything. And a season for every activity under heavens. He goes on to say, there's a time to be born and a time to die. The fact of the matter is, that, listen, don't worry about growing old. Nature will take care of it for you. Don't worry about that. It's going to happen, whether I like it or not. Regardless of all the vitamins and the, and the, and the foundations on your face, one day, you know, they will refuse to obey you. There's a time to plant. There's a time to uproot. There's a time to kill. Not that you're going to kill anybody, but kill some wrong things. And there's a time to heal. There's a time to tear down. There's a time to build. There is a time to weep. There's a time to laugh. You cannot be laughing all the time. There's a time to mourn. There's a time to dance. The, the contrast is amazing. A time to gather stones, a time to, a time to scatter stones, a time to gather them, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. He goes on and on. We, we, can, we can go on and on and on. But all that I'm saying is that seasons happen in life. And just as we see these things happen, in our lives, seasons also happen. In fact, in my part of the world, I'm speaking from uh, the, east, the eastern part of the United States of America. I know some of you are in Africa, some of you are in Australia, some of you are in Europe, some of you are in Asia, all over the world. But in my part of the world, where I am, we have four seasons. They are predictable. Four seasons. As simple as that. We have springtime. Springtime. That is one of my favorite seasons. Because it's not too hot, it's not too cold. But spring is the time that there's li the life of plants and vegetations come up. Anytime it's springtime, you can tell. The flowers are blooming, there's growth, there's life, there's greenery. It's beautiful. You know, all, right now all around us, you know, uh, everything is beautiful, but it started from the springtime where people begin to, you know, look after their gardens, very beautiful. It's so nice. But right after spring, we enter into summer, the season called summer. And right now, as I speak to you, we are in summer. The weather is brutal, but it's a season for harvest. You know, we don't wear heavy, heavy clothing any longer. We put it aside for another time because you can't change the seasons. You only have to adjust to the seasons. Things are bright. People will wear bright colored clothing. It's amazing. People wear shorts where I am. People wear flip-flops. People go to the beach. People go to the pool. It's beautiful. It's season of harvest. But after some few months, we enter into what we call fall. I think in Europe and other places, Australia, they call it the autumn. Fall. And that is where the temperature begins to cool down. Plants and trees begin to lose their, tree, their, their foliage, their, their leaves. And things begin to go dormant. They are preparing for another season. Because right after the fall, there's a season called winter. Mercifully, where I am, the winters are not as harsh as we have them up north. You know, the people from Minnesota, Ethel and Co. will tell you that winters are crazy. 
It gets dark very easy. It's harsh. Trees lose their vegetation. They go, they go into hibernation. It's dormant. There are no leaves, almost no life. Birds don't sink. You don't see the squirrels running up. Every, everything is gone. And then I realized that there's a correlation between this phenomenon of seasons and our human life cycle. Listen, there are so many things that God has given us all around us to teach us. Many times the greatest lessons that you, you learn are not the ones that you find in the four walls of a classroom. Observation with nature, observation with people's lives must teach you a whole lot of things. Governor Jeff, man of God, welcome. God bless you. Eben Akita, Eben, thank you so much for your message today. Eben, Eben, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wow. Ofori Samuel, seriously, yes. Ofori, God bless you so much. Mark Pesima, my millionaire, is telling everybody to register for ISR. We're going to go there. We're going to go there. Yes, begin what you can begin today, Minister Jeff says. Yes, Pastor Metro, don't let's say correct the things you can correct today. Listen, don't relegate correct, correction to some. There are a lot of things in this life that don't self-correct. There are a lot of things in this life that do not self-correct. You have to correct them. If you have made mistakes, don't sit back and expect those mistakes to correct themselves. No. You've got to put effort into it and correct those things. It's very, very, very important that you understand that. Please, 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 whatever it is, Deles Mami Ofua, how are you? Deles, God bless you. Yes, thank you for watching. Baba Odum, God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Now, let's go right ahead. I said that, you know, I've talked about the four seasons here. I know in other places where my, my native continent or my native country, we have two seasons. We have two seasons. We have hot and very hot. You know, we said the hot of, I mean, it's brutal. Where I come from, the sun can fry your brains, especially when we travel from here, here to, to, you know, wherever in West Africa, you know, when we have come out from winter and we go straight across the Sahara, man, it is mind numbing brutal. You can feel it. But hey, we are just, we are hard, we are, we are the hard ones, we are the hardliners, we fight. But listen, there's a correlation between this phenomenon that I'm talk talking to you about springtime, you know, summertime fall and winter you look at it and there's a correlation between that and the human life cycle the springtime of everybody's life is from when you are born zero to when you are 25 years old that's your spring that's your start season that is the time that you are born you begin to grow you bud you learn you lay foundation for your years to come your first 25 years are your defining years you, 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 that's why you get your educational development because you go to school by 25 you should have graduated college if you wanted to do maybe graduate studies maybe if you, whatever but during that time you, you pick up your habits for life it's important the things that you observe where you come from your ethnicity your, your family background all of these things affect you that is why you, between zero when you are born and 25 you make your career choices you begin to walk in the path of your calling towards your destiny. It's important. That is your life. And listen to me if you are, well, you cannot be zero, but if you can comprehend me and you are within that bracket, understand that it's one of the most important years of your life. It is during those times that a lot of people make mistakes because you think you are going to be young forever. You think you are going to live forever. You think you are going to be beautiful forever. You think you are going to have macho forever. You think you are going to have stamina forever. No, you got to be careful. Those are the years that you need to invest for a better tomorrow. Take your education serious. Give yourself to things. Unfortunately, in some cultures, that is the time people waste their lives away. Listen, you can't, you can't, you can't spend all your life in clubs. You can't spend all your life drinking. It catches up one day. Never forget that. It's an investment that you are making. Be wise. Be wise. Be wise. Between zero and 25, your beginning season. What choices are you making? Make the right choices for your tomorrow. Because let me tell you, maintenance is better than repair. Maintenance is better than repair. Then from 25 to 50, 25 to 50 is what I call your summer season. It's your season of harvest. That is when you start to reap the fruits of your spring season. You went to school, 
You went to college, you began to have good habits or bad habits, you begin to see their full manifestation. You mature in your profession. You stabilize your life. You begin to acquire resources. Hopefully, within that time, you are married. You are raising your children. And even between that, between that 25 and 50, you, 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 some of you are beginning to finish raising your children. Because if your children are, you know, getting to 40 and 50 and they are still doing that, uh, trying to find their feet, then there's trouble. If you are very young, let's say you are 15 to 20 and somebody tells you you have potential, be very happy. When you're in your 30s and people say you still have potential, well, get a little bit concerned. But when you are 40 to 50 and they are still telling you you have potential, find Kleenex and begin to weep. And when you are in the 60s and they tell you you have potential, they have insulted you. Do something with your life. Between 25 and 50, very important. You stabilize. Now you know your life. You have family. If, if you decide to have family or whatever, life has good to you, God is good. You mature, you raise your children. That is your summer. But after that, like I told you, nature will take care of you and gradually you go into your fall season. I told you that fall is when leaves begin to fall and the climate begins to change. That is between 50 and 75. And I'm saying this with the premise that God will let you live that long. So it's just an assumption. I cannot determine how long you live. It's in the, it's in the hands of our God. That's the predetermined counsel of our God. I'm just making this assumption that between 50 and 75, that is if God gives you that life, that is a season of when you begin to wind down. That is when in the world's eyes, we begin to lead into retirement. Because I think in many places between 60, 65 and that kind of thing, you begin to retire. And that is where all the efforts that you have made in your springtime and in your harvest time begins to get handy. It's very important. You don't get to 60, 65, and then begin to wonder, what am I going to do with my life? What am I going to do? When am I going to start saving? Then you begin to be reliant on people. You begin to be reliant on the system. And that is where a lot of abuse and disrespect come. So please start planning now. Don't have a defeatist mentality. Remember I told you, you can correct what can be corrected now. I'm sure a lot of you listening to me today, you may be in your summer, you may in your, in your spring and in your summertime. Let me give this wisdom to you for your tomorrow. Between your 50th and your 75th year is your time that you begin to pass down your life experiences to others. Time has now closed down on you. Whether you like it or not, in spite of all the gadgets and things, you, you, may, you, you may need, you may need, some, you, you, you may need some, some, some things to really help you. And I realized that this is one of the crucial places in life where people get what we call midlife crisis. Why do I say that? Because during the midlife crisis, that is where people realize they have missed opportunities. Regret. Regret. There's also the payback for waste of time and waste of life. You think about that. Then people resign into regret. They get angry. And this is what I want to help you avoid. For autumn, we all will get there one day. And finally, winter. 75 plus. 75 plus. Around winter, the leaves have fallen. Nature has done its job. Eternal transition beckons you. Please look at me. Let me tell you something. Look at me in the eye. You will die one day. You may not like to hear that, but nobody lives here forever. A day comes when you are beckoned. We have to move house. The heart stops. The eyes close. You got to go. Whatever, however you want to go, start preparing now. But between, after 75 onwards, as the Lord blesses you with more life, and not just life, but good life, healthy life, that is when you begin to hand over matters to your successors. It's important that you understand that. And I pray that the Lord God will help all of us not to waste lives and to live and to finish in regret. One of the greatest leaders ever was a man that was raised 
in a palace in Egypt. By the hand of God, the establishment that he would defeat was the establishment that trained him. I'm talking about Moses. And in one of his contemplations, he began to look over the journey that God had led him with the children of Israel across a harsh terrain to the threshold of the inheritance called the promised land. He had seen the people mess up. He had seen them do a whole lot of things. And Moses is contemplating. And as he put his pen to parchment in Psalm 90, he says a whole lot of things about God being our God from ancient days till now. But look at verse number 9 through 12. He says that we live our lives beneath your wrath. He's thinking, he's contemplating about all the things that had happened. We end our years with a groan. The old King James says that we spend our days like a tale that is told. It's over. And he says 70 years are given to us. Think about that. They wondered and 70 years they are gone. Normally around 70, you know, all the other ones is bonus. Say so some even live to 80. That is us, you know. We still look like this at 80 and more. You know, we will just to live to 80. But even the best years are filled with pain and trouble. Soon they disappear. We fly away. We die. Moses says, who can truly comprehend the power of your anger? He was contemplating about how they have provoked God. You know, and it happens in our lives. And he says, your wrath is as awesome as the fear you deserve. But please look at this. This is what interests me today. Teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. Teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. I said before you today, I'm 65 years old. Even though I don't think like that, I don't suspect. I think my mother made a mistake on the birth certificate. But the truth of the matter is, I look back and 65 has just come just like that. I've had a very adventurous life. I've enjoyed leading people. I've enjoyed helping people. I've enjoyed connecting with people. But it's like, where did life go? And I'm a, I can say that I'm quite happy. Because these things that I'm teaching, I've worked them. So today, I want to give you, in the days ahead, maybe I'll give you about 10 or 12 keys to help you live your life well. And then one day, when you've got to go, you live well by the grace of God. I pray that you don't die before your time. Because if you die before your time, you didn't die, you got killed. And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, that nothing will cut your life short. No tragedy, no disaster, no calamity will take you. May every pit that has been dug for you become the pit of your enemies. May every snare, every net that has been laid for your feet become that which takes your enemy. Just as Daniel was delivered from the lions then and as he was going up, his enemies were going down. Let there be a divine change that those that have determined to put you in dens and in prisons and in jails, spiritual jails, and okay, let them taste of their own medicine in the name of the Lord. I pray that every plan of the enemy will, back, will backfire in the name of the Lord. May your steps not be hindered. May no barrier ever stop you from going forward. I pray that you will live long and you will live well to the glory of Almighty God. So let me give you a few building blocks. Let's see who do we have here. Iso, Isobel, thank you so much. Isobel, thank you so much. Honorable Nananimo, God richly bless you so much. Fiona Abnapia, I like your name. God richly bless you so much. Alex Boateng, Alex, God bless you. Done well. Insurance, we're going to talk about you one of these days. You are doing amazing work. Louisa Osborne, Louisa, God bless you. We are looking forward to having you here. Victoria Dodo Vicky, God bless you so, so, so much. Yes, 65 years young. Felicia, I am 65 years young. You are as young as you think. God richly bless you so much. We're going, let's move, let's move right ahead. Let's move right ahead. Adelaide Tetchimensa from Delaware, daughter, God richly bless you. Kate in Jikan, Kate, God bless you so, so much. Listen, I want to put a few keys today. I'm going to give you just maybe three or four, depending on the time. I won't hold you very long. But listen, everything, you are who you, you are what the thing, you are what the, you are the sum total of what you did yesterday. Never forget that. And you'll be what you'll be tomorrow, today. Your tomorrow is hidden in what you do today. Never forget that. 
your habits, the things you put together, very, very, very important. So please, let me quickly, quickly, quickly tell you, there are four seasons that we have wherever I am. Springtime, summertime, the fall or autumn, and winter. We go through those things. Your first 25 years, you know, I took 100 years and invented them before. Your first, maybe zero to 20, 25, that is your start season, your summer, your spring season. That is where you begin to grow. You pick up habits. You, you, you begin to, to learn. You lay the foundation for your years to come. If you are young, listen, teenager, whatever, in your young adult, this is very important. Don't waste time. Time catches up very quickly. Don't waste your life. Don't spend all your life on frivolities. Don't chase fantasies. Be serious in life. People who get ahead, they start early. Do it. If you have to learn the culture of saving, do it. If you have to learn how to do stocks, do it now. Because tomorrow may be too late. Your educational development, your career. Then 25 to 50 is your harvest. Is you begin to reap the fruits of whatever you did in your first 25 years. That is where you mature, you grow in your profession, you stabilize, you acquire resources, you build, you, you buy homes, you know, you marry, you raise your children, you raise them, you send them off, you know, then you come to the fall season between your 50 and your 75. That is where you begin to wind down. Listen, age, age 55 and 70 is not the time you begin to look for jobs. If you do that, you have made some mistakes in the first two seasons. That is the time you are beginning to prepare to step back. You passing down your life experiences to others. And if I were you, I'll look for people in the fall of their lives and befriend them. I'll be talking about that before I finish. Make friends with them. Glean from them. Learn from their experiences. You know, I, I, I don't want you to be in midlife crisis where you realize, oh, the pain of regret, my missed opportunities, my wasted life. No. Then winter comes, 75 plus, where the leaves fall. Nature has done its job. The dentures, maybe, as well as, no, we, we won't have them any. Then it, eternal transition begins to beckon you. And Moses says, teach us to number our days, the brevity of life, so thou have wisdom. So, the first thing that I want to give to you today, right now, is that you must have personal motivation in life. Have personal motivation. Hear me. No matter how gifted you are, no matter how talented you are, no matter your pedigree, the color of your skin, your creed, your color, your gender, whatever, at the end of the day, your personal motivation, I didn't say motive, I said your personal motivation is a major key for positioning your life for a great future. Your dreams, your visions, your desires must motivate you yourself. That is what your, your personal motivation must push you beyond your perceived limits. Please listen to me. If your dream, if your vision, if your desire does not first of all motivate you, it will never motivate anybody and it will not be celebrated by anybody. I've seen people who say, I have this desire, I want to do this, but there's nothing that motivates them. They are so flat. They are so colorless like vanilla. Listen. If you do that, then your life will become like a salesperson who does not believe in their product. Imagine somebody shows up at your door and they are selling a product. And the way they are, they are, they are pitching the product, the way they are, it's like they, they don't even believe in the thing they are selling. How am I going to buy it? If your attitude and everything is like that, note this, I'm going to put it out there for you. If it's not first on the inside, it will not be on the outside. If there's no fire on your inside, nobody will catch fire on your outside. Something must drive you. There must be a personal motivation to make it in life. Please listen. I have a question for you. How strong is your personal motivation? What makes you tick? What makes you wake up without an alarm clock, even when you feel like sleeping? What drives you? What is on the inside of you? What, what, what is the measure, the temperature of the fire on your inside? That I cannot be ordinary. I cannot be mediocre. I cannot be like anybody else. I've got to do something with my life. It must be a self-motivation. The thing about life that I have observed like, 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 like a holy spy is that too many people are dependent on others to motivate them and to tell them what they ought to do. 
Many years ago, I was raising a group of guys around me as leaders, and one of them was very offended. I didn't know until one day we were having that conversation. And I said, why, why are you like this? He said, no, you know, you don't, you don't shout on us. You don't motivate us. And I said, brother, find yourself a new leader. Because I'm not going to hold a whip. The day you see a cow holding a stick to motivate the cow head, there's trouble. The day you see a cow motivating the cow head or a sheep holding a stick to motivate the, sh the shepherd, there's trouble. Don't wait for somebody to motivate you. Motivate yourself. Motivate yourself. I meet too many people. They are always looking for the encouragement committee to come visit them. Listen, I believe in counseling, but I don't believe in everlasting counseling. I discourage that because there are too many people, they are only looking for attention, not for something to move them forward. I believe in empowerment. I want you to get up. I want you to take a calculated risk. I want you to move. Please don't always wait for somebody to move you. Let's visit the ant, the symbol of industry, the one that does not talk and yet speaks wisdom loudly. In Proverbs chapter 6 and verse number 4 to 10, it talks, the ant is showing us things. It said, don't give sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your... Listen to that. Don't give sleep, which means there are times that your eyes may be rebelling, but there is a cause. There's something that must be done. Sometimes I've told my eyes, you are not sleeping now. There's something to be accomplished before we sleep. And by the way, by the way, if you rest before you are tired, you are lazy. If you rest before you are tired, you are lazy. There is a time to rest and there's a time to work, to be active. Don't give sleep to your eyelids and slumber. It didn't say don't sleep at all because sleep is not a waste of time. It's a temporary change of occupation. But when sleep becomes your hobby, when sleep becomes your, I know people, I know people that they can, I mean, they can, even when there's, there's music and something going on all around, people are jumping, they are sleeping. It's like, seriously? You got to be serious. You got to motivate yourself. Let's go right ahead. Deliver yourself, deliver yourself, deliver yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the of the of the hunt. There are things that want to hunt you and I down. Life wants to bring you down, things want to connive against you. You've got to understand you were created to succeed, but life connives to bring you down. And it says that listen, a gazelle is, is, is prey, something wants to prey on it. And he said, The bed from the hands of the trapper, they want to trap you. You've got to deliver yourself, church. People, I beg your pardon, pastor, you know, pastor talk. You've got to deliver yourself. You've got to, and how do you do that? Be awake. Have your wits about you. Let's go right ahead. And he says that if you want to know how, go to the ant. You lazy person. The message translates is lazy bones. Consider the ways of the ant and get some university education for yourself. How does it do that? It has no captain. It has no ruler or overseer or ruler. And yet it provides her supplies in the summer and gathers food in the harvest. Do you see that? You see the correlation, summer harvest? You see that? You see that? Please go back for me one. You see that? It's there. The Bible say, is telling us that the ant provides in the summer supplies because it knows that it will not be summer forever. A winter will come that there will be nothing to harvest. A winter will come that there will be nothing to, to happen. And so right there in the summer, it's gathering itself. The ant is self-motivated. Why do I know it's self-motivated? You go back, he said it has no guide, it has no captain, no overseer or ruler. Which means it doesn't wait for somebody to say, get up and, and harvest, get up and store this, get up and do that. That unfortunately is the forte of many people in some cultures. They always want somebody to talk for them. They always want somebody to pray for them. They always want somebody to prophesy for them. They always want somebody to read the Bible for them. They always want somebody to brush their teeth for them. They always want somebody to give them things. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. People may not always talk for you. The fact is that people in life have issues. Sometimes the people you are waiting for them to motivate you, they themselves are demotivated. So please, get up in your life. Talk to yourself. Have a self, have a staff meeting, a meeting with yourself. Talk to yourself. Why am I sitting here until I die? Why am I in this situation? Am I waiting for somebody? I've, I've known people when I was growing up. I knew people that their friends gave them a promise when they were traveling outside their country. 
to Europe and other places that will come and pick you one. It's been 30 years they are still waiting. Come on. Motivate yourself. Talk to yourself. There's a dream on the inside of you. There's greatness looking for expression. There's something burning. Please don't die with your fire on the inside of you. Don't, don't make this world a poorer place because you didn't give expression. A great man of God told us the other day that the richest places on earth are not the oil fields of Saudi Arabia. The richest places on earth are not the gold fields of South Africa. The richer places on earth are not the, the uranium fields of some, but the richest places on earth are in the cemeteries. Can you imagine? And I said, why? And the answer is, underneath those gravestones were songs that were never written. Books that were never written. Businesses that were never found expression. Please don't die with your talent. Don't bankrupt this world. But it only happens when you become a self-motivated person. Please, if you have an assignment, do it. Duty before pleasure. If you have something to do that is important, please do it before you seek pleasure. Do that. Put it away. Don't put yourself under stress. All of us have 24 hours a day. Nobody has 25. The separation between the one who is under less stress and the one who is overstressed is how they manage their time. Self-motivation. Have personal motivation. Don't wait for somebody to motivate you. Get up. At this age, I tell you, I get up myself. Sometimes I don't feel like it. Sometimes the body wants to rebel and I tell the body, you are coming with me. We've got work to do. We've got a wealth to touch. We've got human beings to help. Let's go. Let's sit down. Let's write. Everything is telling you rebel. No, there's a time to play and there's a time to pray. There's a time to play. There's a time to work. I hope you are getting me. Have self personal motivation. I hope I can. I hope I've been able to tell somebody today that don't sit and become a vegetable. Time and tide waits for no man. All the promises that people have given to you, good as they may be, may not be the thing to take, take you forward. Take life by the bootstraps. Get up. Stand up. Help will come one day. But let no help find you unprepared. Self-motivation. Let me give you a second one. Have seasons of personal reflection and refreshing. Seasons of that. Naname Jewa, God bless you so much. Sela, Sela Priscilla, God bless you. Yvonne Hotto, Yvonne, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Naname Jewa says that I will never die with my talent. Don't die with your talent, Nana. Don't die with your talent. God bless you really good. Appel Daniel, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Motivate yourself. Yes, I like that. Motivate yourself, motivate yourself. Yes, motivate yourself. Listen, have seasons of reflection and refreshing. Seasons of that. One of the greatest examples of living well and living well was a certain Jewish carpenter from a little place called Galilee. This man was powerful, more powerful than anything that has ever come on this earth. He was great. He was anointed without measure. He was wise. But if you follow him through the records called the Gospels, you realize that he had some patterns in life because, you know, success leaves clues. Sometimes you don't need to beg people for things. Ask people for information. Observe people. I tell people a lot of times that sometimes the greatest gift that can be given to you is the gift of exposure. When God allows you to be exposed to a place, a person, or a thing, it is a blessing. Especially when you get the fortune of being exposed to greatness. Don't go there and be jealous. Don't, don't go there and record them secretly. Don't go there and Go and use their name to drop things that I know there's no. Go there and be quiet and observe. You know, during the, the last series of the mentor and the protege, I think I made a promise. I, I will do that about how to work with a leader. It, it, it's, it's amazing how people make mistakes when they are working with leaders. But listen, if you look at this carpenter, this Jewish carpenter, you realize that he often took time to go away by himself to reflect 
and to refresh. Never forget that. This life is like a treadmill. People are rushing from assignment to assignment. Work, church, party, funeral. It's like people are so predictable. On and on and on. And I meet, I meet 10 people, nine of them are stressed out, ready to drop dead. Have seasons. There's a sign that I want to show you. I don't think I, I did, but I don't know. There's a sign. When you are driving or whatever, there's a sign that I want to show you. I want to put it there. I'm, I hope you you will recognize the sign that I, if I'm able to put it there, I'll do that. But there's a sign out there. I want, I want to show you in a minute. It's, it's, it's one of the most beautiful signs that you ever have. Because you may have talent. You may have ability. You may be rushing all over the place. You know, your talent and your and your gift and it's the accelerator. You are going, 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 going. But if your car only has an accelerator, you know what's going to happen to you. You're going to be in trouble. You see the sign that I put out there? You see that sign? It is called stop. It's a stop sign. I know in some other places in this world, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I know there are some places that I've been in this world, some countries that I want to leave nameless for security reasons. Stop signs don't matter. But in a place where I live, where there's order and systems work, stop signs are very important. And this sign that I'm showing you today, please hear me. What does it mean to you? For me, it's a lifesaver. You get to a crossroads and there are no traffic lights to regulate. Stop signs. They, they regulate you and they help you not to get into a headlong accident or for a car or a truck to T-bone you because we obey instructions. Stop! Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Have seasons where you stop. Stop! You are not the general manager of the planet Earth and four more nearby planets. Sometimes stop! Wisdom should tell you stop and refresh. Step back. That is what retreat is all about. Take some time. It doesn't have to be three years or ten years. Sometimes just a day, half a day, stop and reflect, think. Look through life. Let, let, let's, let's take it off and let's go. Listen, your, your, the stop sign will be a lifesaver to you. I hope I'm making sense to you. In Mark chapter 6, verse number 31, let's look at what Jesus the carpenter said. He said that there was such a swell of activity around Jesus. Swell of activity. Man, I'm talking about a man that is God incarnate. Powerful. He walked on water. He spoke to dead and they, and they, they, they rose up. There was so much activity. So many people coming and going. So many, they, they were not even able to eat a meal. If it were to be today, that leader would say, I'm very successful. They pride in themselves that even the whole they have not eaten because I'm meeting so many needs. But listen to what Jesus said to his disciples. He said, come, let's take a break. Let's find a secluded place where we can rest a while. God is resting. What about you? Step back. Find a secluded place and rest a little bit. Have some seasons of solitude. Today's generation, we are so noise polluted that we are afraid of solitude and quietness. It's so bad that if the television breaks down, we turn on the washing machine so at least something will be moving. Please listen to me. I'm showing you the secrets of great lives. We step back and we rest because if you don't come apart, you will fall apart. If you don't come apart, you will fall apart. When you have your seasons of solitude, when you get out of circulation, yeah, that is that on your screen. You can you can screenshot it or whatever. But if you don't come apart, you fall apart. Listen, when you take a little bit of time off to reflect, to refresh, the world will not miss you. You are not carrying the whole world on your shoulders. So please disconnect, disconnect a bit. Sometimes disconnect from the constant clutter of incoming information. You know, the other day there was there was a research made in the United Kingdom about addictions. And when I read it, I said, whoa. You know, and I'll recommend a book to you about this. I read it. It helped me. I, I recommended it. I gave it to my young children, my, my young adults, you know. And one of the, the most addictive thing today is not heroin or cocaine or marijuana or anything of that matter or alcohol. Today, the most addictive thing 
is this thing that I hold in my hands? A cell phone. People will kill for it. I have, not that I have heard, I have seen many times here, yeah, especially in London or other places, you know, where people walk a lot. I've seen people be on their phone all the way until they run into a pool and bled. People have had terrible accidents because of the phone. People, people have woken up in the morning tired already because of notifications. You have to check who liked your photo. You know you are ugly. Why do you worry? We know it. I'm being nasty. Please forgive me. Actually, don't forgive me. You know you are not all that. That's why you go to check constantly. Please listen to me. Not every like is a like. Not everybody who likes your photo likes you. Get on with your Have tough mental toughness and go ahead. Please listen to me. There's constant information bombarding. Sometimes somebody will send me an email. Let me tell you something. People will send me an email. And in about two minutes, they send me a text. Papa, have you seen my email? You don't want to know the, res the reply I give to them. You don't, you don't want to know the reply I give to them. And I don't want you to ask me because you will not like it for many years to come. No. Hear me. You cannot spend your life like that. You cannot bend the candle at both ends in life. I know social media is powerful. I know you want to know the, what's what's up. I, I, I know you want to know what's up. You, you want to you want to check your your status. You want to check your story. You want to get on social media. I want to know what is trending. You want to know what has gone viral. But what has that put in your pocket? What has it done? What what has all the information you have heard about who is going out with who and who slept with who and who fell and who lost and who did this and 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 there are some coaches the way they go on. Platforms that give absolutely nothing intelligent. Facebook stars, those who are going viral, are people who are very good at insults. People who don't talk any sense to bring national development. No doubt those cultures are wallowing. Even though they sit in plenty, they have to run to other nations to run their economy for them. Listen to me. Can, do you want to be different? You don't have to follow the path everybody else is following. You've got to make up your mind. Listen, I made up my mind that I don't want to just be an ordinary person. I don't want to be a last resort. I want to be a first response. So I looked at what ordinary people were doing and I decided I won't do that. If you want to be extraordinary, look for what ordinary people do and don't do it. Put the extra on your ordinary. Today, technology is the modern slave master. The constant emails, the WhatsApp messages, the chat groups, the WhatsApp, on and on. Can you stop already and have seasons? These things that I'm teaching you, it will help you for your tomorrow. The way you become fresh every day. People ask me why, how I look, the way I look this, like this, is because I am disciplined. I don't have to reply every email immediately. What is urgent to you may not be urgent to me. What is urgent to you may not be important. I refuse to be taken by the tyranny of the agent. Never forget that, my friend. Never forget that, my friend. You know something? Seasons have a soul detox. The shepherd boy, the darling boy of Israel, writing one of the great Psalms, Psalm 23, possibly the most beloved and well-known Psalm. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Look at what he does. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Lie down. He leads me beside quiet waters. You need solitude. Listen, solitude is not is not is not is not being is not is not loneliness. Solitude is not loneliness. Solitude is you yourself backing away, backing away. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. There's a soul restoration, soul detox. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotion. And sometimes there's so much clutter. You know something. Occasionally, I, I don't know if this, this will work in some places, but just find a park and just go and sit down. Just find a park. Just go sit down. I originally come from, you know where, and most of the parks that, when I was little, before I left, quite young, today I go back, they've all been built. Houses have been built on it by powerful men. All sold and things. But there are still some places in your city, where you can go and sit quietly for a day, make contact with nature, look at trees and look at birds, rather than all the diesel trucks that are polluting the atmosphere. Do it. Get out of your house. Go somewhere, even for an hour. 
Be quiet. Stop the noise pollution. Reflect on your life. Think about life. It will surprise you. It will surprise you how much you will learn about yourself. Refresh. Regroup. Renew. Even machines in factories, occasionally they shut down the factory so that they can have maintenance. I hope I'm helping you. Have personal motivation. Number two, have seasons. Back off. Disconnect. Get off Facebook for one day. Just one day. I know two days you 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 be very sick. So just a day. Discipline yourself. It's doable. You can do it. Number three, and I'm done. I hope you are learning. Value your associations. I'm talking about profitable associations. Because your associations, your connections, are the key to your greatness and to your living well. Here in the United States of America, we have some of the largest trees on earth. They are called the sequoia trees or the redwood trees. They are the western part of the United States. They are in southern Oregon, northern California. Huge. Some go as high as 100 feet. They are giants. Heavy duty. Powerful. For last, this, as I speak right now, some of them are under threat because of wildfires in California. They are looking at how they can save those trees because they are historical. Some grow as to be a thousand years. It was discovered the other day that their roots don't go deep. And yet they are giant trees. They found out that their trees go sideways. Their, their roots, I beg your pardon, go sideways and they intertwine with one another. So that when there's inclement weather, whether it's windy, whatever, they help support one another. You are going to stand, you are going to live well, you are going to be great. Not because your roots go deep, but because your roots go sideways and you are connected to people. The ultimate person who walked on earth was Jesus Christ, the Jewish carpenter. He connected with people. He chose 12 people, handpicked hand 12 people to, that they may be with him, connection, and that he will send them out. Relationship before work. Relationship before work. And he had relationships of different levels. He went to villages. There were homes, Mary and Martha's homes that he went to. They were his friends. If they said it, Lazarus, your friend. He had friends. He had connections. He went to places. And listen to me. Relationship is spelled T-I-M-E. Relationships is spelled T-I-M-E. Time. If you want to be in a good relationship, time. Availability for the other person. The sad reality is that a lot of people don't do relationship well. Now look into your life. If there's a lot of turnover in your relationship, the, 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 the issue is probably you. Because if you can't keep friends, friends can keep you. Do you only make contact when you need something? There are people like that. I'm sure you know people don't like you very much. Because there are people who say they are your friend. The only time you hear from them is when they need something. Once they get it, you never hear from them again. Oh, I have a lot of them like that. If you are like that, you are not a good friend. Do you wait for others to chase you? You are not a good friend. So as for me, I'm not very good at calling people. Listen, go throw your phone in the sea. Relationships are an investment. Look out for somebody. Check on people. Don't only check on them when you have an agenda. Check on them. Find out. Occasionally, I've been texting people, asking them, telling them I'm still here. You don't call me when, Papa, I need this. How do you know that? How do you interpret this? Do you have notes for that? Don't do that. I'll let you be in trouble one day. I'll promise you it's coming, but it never come. I'll just put you under pressure. Can you stand people on the long term? There are people, the longest you can keep a friend is three minutes and it's over. You can't do that. One day you are going to get old and you are going to wake up with regret because you never valued the good people that God sent your way. Ne Listen, nurture your relationships. is very important. Maybe somebody listening to me today, you may need to humble yourself and go and mend some fences. Some friends that you haven't treated well, you need to go and apologize and mend those fences. Because listen, are you going to go through life making new friends every week? That's a very, that's a very painful investment. Oh, by all means, make new friends. But value the old. Because one is silver, the other is gold. Did you hear me? I said make new friends. But value the old. Keep the old. Because one is silver and the other is gold. There are three dimensions of association. Let me give it to you and I'm done. I hope you have learned something today. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. God bless you. It's going to be better and better and better and better and better and better and better. 
Nanaiku Okata, God bless you. This is the first time watching me. You don't, you don't, you don't know what you have been missing. From today, get addicted. Get addicted. It gets better. It gets get better. It gets better. Pastor Brian Awate. Hey, my prophet. God bless you. Listen, let's talk right after this. I have good news for you. God bless you so much. Pastor Brian, God bless you so much. Yes, 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 yes. Now, listen. There are three dimensions. Three dimensions of us. You must have upward associations. You must have upward associations. There must be somebody or a people, somebody that you are accountable to. Don't be a loose cannon. You must have somebody that you look up to, somebody who is not necessarily impressed by your accomplishments. Listen to me. You must have somebody who is truthful and direct with you. I have people like that in my life. They ask me questions, penetrating questions. I can't blink. People must be, you must have somebody who is able to speak into your life without fear. Is there anybody that when you see their name on your caller ID, you stop what you are doing and you stand because it's somebody that you stand up to. Please, the terminology is not the very best, but let me use it. You must have people that circumcise you, not people who castrate you. Paul, the apostle, was the greatest proponent of Christian liberty. And let us understand, according to the Jewish rituals, that when you, become, when you come into Christ, circumcision is not necessary. He spoke against that, he wrote against that. That circumcision doesn't make you anything. It is circumcision of the heart, not on your on your on your physical body. He had a little. Uh, he had a young protege. He was called Timothy. Timothy was Greek, half Greek, half Jew. His father was Greek, and he wasn't circumcised. And because of that, he couldn't go to the synagogue to preach because it was forbidden. Paul took this man and circumcised him. He cut him for him to bleed. Why? So that Timothy would be able to go into places that he couldn't go to. You must have somebody who is able to cut you sometimes for you to bleed. Not that he's destroying you, not that he's causing you pain, not that he's a sadist, but he wants to make you fit to go to places that ordinarily you couldn't go to. Who do you have? That is your upward relationship. When they speak to you, do you back off? Do you get angry? Do you suck for a long time and never talk to them? I have people that say, Papa, speak into my life until I begin to speak into their life and they don't like it. Oh, how I wish I had so many of them who can speak truthfully into my life and correct me and put me on the straight and the narrow. Today's generation don't like that. But if you are wise, if you want to live well and live well, then you've got to have that relationship. Number two, you must have a sideways relationship. Sideways association, very important. I'm talking about your friends, your buddies, the people you hang out with. And please, when I say sideways relationship, not your whole town. Not your whole city, not the whole office, not everybody, not the whole church. Yes, church, yes. You can't be friends with everybody in the church. He said, but we are in the same body. Yes, we are in the same body. Let me tell you something. My mouth and my foot, they all belong to the body of Uswapia, but they've never met. And yet, if my foot is broken, my mouth can't go to work. You've got to understand that. So please be wise. Because the more sideways friends that you have, who are close and know everything, the more troubles you have. You must have friends, few of them, who are there for you in your pain, in your shame, in your they, they know the worst about you and yet they stick with you. These are the people who genuinely celebrate your triumphs without being jealous. Consider yourself blessed if in your lifetime you just have one friend like that in this interesting world. I'm telling you, can have a lot of acquaintances, but friends, sideways, and finally, downward association. Have somebody, have some people that you pour your life into. It is such a blessing to pick up somebody and start mentoring them. I think I thought about that. You have no idea the blessings that it will bring. For me, I sit back and I look at people I've poured my life into who are rising up to become giants and better than me. Oh, the joy. I sleep smiling. I won't die one day smiling. Listen to me. Your associations will yield dividends one day. Have a friend, be a friend. So remember, have personal motivation. Have seasons of reflection and refreshing. Value your association. Remember this, seasons change. Life changes. God is eternal. You know something, we'll continue again. I hope it has been a blessing to you. Tell others that it is happening. All that remains for me to say is this. Tomorrow starts ISI. It's going to be lit. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to be amazing. Make sure that you invest in yourself. 
If you have enjoyed this, you are going to enjoy that. This is our 18th year that we've been doing this. Sometimes you just have to stop, travel, go away, take vacation, come and connect. You know, there are people who have connected and they have become firm friends on this. Thank you so much. If you want to partner with us, we'll be happy for you to partner with us. We'll have some information there. God will bless you. I pray for you tonight, wherever you may be, that as you sleep, may God Almighty keep you secure and protect you. May his hands never leave you. I pray that ideas, ideas, dreams, visions that will move you forward will come to you. I pray that you become that man or woman who will get into the fall and the winter of their lives and never live in regret. God do you good in the name of the Lord Jesus. My name is Franco Fusuapia, your ambassador of hope. I'll see you next week when I see you. Bye-bye.